Every minute of every day, someone calls for help from a paramedic. Their job is to bring order out of chaos, stabilise the victim and transport them to hospital. A night in the life of a paramedic providing help. I was a, a plumber for uh, nine years. I started work quite early when I was 15. And uh, I, I got to as far as that job really was going to take me and, and, I, uh, and I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy at all and a girlfriend of mine um, uh, first told me about the ambulance service. I'd, ne I'd never even considered it. At the education centre, one of the motorcycle paramedics pulled up and he, uh, he was in this, on this big white motorcycle with red and white checkers on it and he's dressed in a blue leather jacket with a helmet. I thought, oh, how good is that? You know, like this place getting paid to ride around. And uh, I focused on it. And then when they advertised for the uh, motorcycle position, I went for it and was lucky enough to get on. It's great, like you come to work, you, you get on your bike and they say, okay, ride across the city and go and sort this person out. And you go over there and your adrenaline's up because of the ride that you've just taken. And then you get off the bike and you've got to have to calm and cool and talk to these people with your heart rate doing about 400. And uh, you sit down there and then get their confidence by being calm and taking control. And yeah, it's, a, it's great, I love it. Thank you, Cycle 1 and Cycle 2. You have an elderly male that's fallen down a cliff, unable to move or talk. Can you tell us what happened? All right, what we're going to do, put a collar on your neck. Yep. All right, we'll start doing this. Just to keep you nice and still, we're going to carry you out of here, all right? Now, have you got any pain anywhere at all, mate? No? OK, you're just really cold? Yeah? All right, don't you move your neck. I'm going to do everything for you. What's your name, mate? I've got a bit of a smell on his breath. Fellas, blankets. Yeah, get the blankets. Oh, yeah. excellent. Ah, we've Thanks, got a door. Have we got a space blanket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop that on. Please, please, that one. Do you need anything at all? Just yeah. straighten your arm out for me, mate. He's too cold to get a reading. Shaking all over the place. We'll get you out of here in a minute. We can carry him out of here, all right? Have we worked that away? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good man. You guys want to over him? Yeah. Can you just get me a flush, Bill? OK, flush. OK, we're right to um, roll him onto this board. Matey, just open your eyes for me. Open right up. We're just going to roll you onto your right side, OK? If we could get someone jumping on the other side there, just to check his back for us. Yeah, Print it wrong. Right. One, two, three, roll him over. Just have a good look. Is it hurting anywhere that we're touching, mate? OK, back. Right, go back. Three, two, one, go back. Yeah. And just help, help him onto that. What? What's your first name? Say that again. Patrick. Patrick? Patrick? Yeah? Patrick, how old are you? 50 something. All right, Patrick. Did you fall from up the top? You're not sure? You did fall. Right up the top. Hey, Patrick, going to take out the hospital now. Ready down there? Everyone got a handle? One, two, three, lift. This way we go. All right, you guys drop. You guys right? Yeah. We're very lucky we saw him, but yeah, yeah, we saw him. He's, uh... Would you have looked there yesterday and noticed him? No, 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 no. definitely not. We, um, we just went out, we saw him down there on his back, really shaking. No way. Thanks heaps for that, mate. Thank you. Do you take any medicines at all? Code 3 9 with Code 3 to St. Vincent's. You do, yes. Patrick, I know you're really cold, mate. I just need you to try and try and relax all your muscles for 10 seconds. You got a stitch. Relax your elbow. I know it's sore, mate. Just relax it. Miraculously, our patient only suffered mild concussion and bruising. He checked out of hospital soon after his fall.
uh, with Deb, I mean, you usually talk to your partner or, you know, other colleagues that are on stage, and we seem to deal with that much better than, you know, probably talking to your partner or talking to anybody else about it. You have a middle-aged man unconscious. He's hit the car in front. Police are on the scene. 963, copy that. Thanks, mate. We've got police on the left. They're way over to the left. The monitor. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Go, go. You're doing good, guys. Go Shall I just stop CPR for a minute? Yep. Uh, I see they get a recording. You all right? All right. Go, go wash your mouth out. Hey, continue CPR. We've got no mask, so I, I got the mask. Right. Can you get Eight, me good deal, please? 9, 10, 11, 12. You're 13, doing well, mate. 14, 15. He's got a lot of food. All right. All right, I'm going to put line in. All right, can you... Do it in the car or here? Oh, we'll do it here. Just get the stuff. We need backup. So we'll just wait till I get here. You want a hand? You want me to keep no, you're doing well. Questions? You keep doing it. You're doing really well. Yeah. Messy one, isn't it? You getting any suction on that? Yeah, it's just getting blocked with all the food. Ben, if there's a spare ammo there to get the bed, get him out. Yeah. Ventilating. Okay. Out, load. One, two, three. Right, let's go. What do you want? And we'll get him in. Can you just move to my right? Go in. Put the monitor up there, mate. Yep. Can we get this oxy fiber out of the way? Can you let them know that we're coming in? Wow. Yeah. Whether he's choked. Chris, are you happy to do the code three? Coming to you with a proxy 50-year-old male found a code 2 in the street. At present, he's in ACC. Um, he's not intubated at this time. He's cannulated. He's going in progress, and we'll be with you in about three minutes. Okay, thank you. Yes. More food coming out. How much food has he got? I don't know where they got the 35-year-old. Can you give us some air, too, please? Yeah, Thanks, mate. All right, we're right. Just watch this hand. As soon as we come out, can someone continue CPR, please? You're right, Christy. Yep. Had a go at him, and then Bridget just called it quits. He's going to heaven. Hopefully, anyway. Yeah, I'm very conscious of the fact that when we're doing a cardiac arrest, that um, I mean, it sounds a bit bizarre, but you have a feeling you're being watched. I have a feeling I'm being watched. I've done a few jobs where some very strange things have happened. Um, so when we're doing a cardiac arrest, I think it's very important to you know, treat the patient still as we do, with dignity and respect. Um, but yeah, it's almost like they're watching from the corner at the top of the room sort of thing. It's a bit strange, a bit hard to explain. It sounds like I'm a fruitcake, but I'm not. Um, in my probationary period, I did a, an older gentleman that was in cardiac arrest. Um, and I was working with a very senior paramedic, he was on the car with me. And while we were doing CPR, this gentleman who was in full cardiac arrest and no cardiac output, his hand came up onto his chest and we stopped CPR and checked for a pulse and the monitor was saying nothing and there was no mechanical output. So the paramedic said, oh, continue. So we continued and his hand came up two more times and that freaked me out. I mean, this is a clinically dead person and his hand was moving. And I interpreted that, and I still believe it to this day, that I interpreted that as him saying, look, stop, get your hands off my chest. And that's, yeah, it was bizarre, but it's a true story. Um, so yeah, I believe that, um, yeah, you might be dead, but I don't know whether you're, you're still aware of what's going on. So yeah, it's a bit strange. 963, go on, boys. 9963, you have an elderly lady with a cardiac history of a severe chest pain. Language may be a problem, then. 
This is our street. 963 location. Thank you. Hello. Good. Yeah? Which way are we going? This way. Yeah? Hello. How are you going, mate? Hello, sir. How are we? Alright, good. Is that the patient? Hello. How are you going? No good. I didn't say. Come here, Dima. I just got. It's going to be yours, Audi. You speak English at all? Okay. I'm going to put you on some oxygen. Santa. Under your tongue. Mm. That's it. Chuck me another tourniquet on you and I'll whack it on the other arm. There is a blood pressure jar. 150. Quite tacky. All right, sweetie. Little sting. Little needle. I'll just get another BP and I'll get that second engine in into it. Tablet gone? Up. Oh. No, it's not gone. <laughs> I'm going to give it 80 of LASIKs, all right? Yep. I'm going to give it some drop any 20... morphine. Yep. Saw, Mum? Saw? Uh, no. No saw? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. You there, matey? <laughs> Can, hello. This is your mum? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Can you ask her, does she have any pains in her chest? What in the chest, yes, yes. Not in the heart, but in the top of the stomach. How long has she been like this for? For one month, on and off. Has she ever had any heart problems? Now, what medical history does she have? She got fresh blood pressure. That's all? She takes this tablet. Yeah. She sort of helped her a lot. She helped her a lot. Yeah. All right. So what happened tonight? She slept up to two o'clock and this started she get pain. Pain where? In the stomach. All right. Is this the morphine? Yep. Sure is. Give it a ten of max to you. Do you want to Just tell her we're going to take her up to hospital. Have you got a plastic mm -hmm. bag we can put all her medicine in? We'll yep. take it with us. Okay. You feel better? Well, who's she? Yeah, she's Yeah, a bit better. Better? Yeah. Oh, good. All right. She looks a lot better. Oh, she wants her scar? Yeah, she is that all right? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, is that all right like that? Just, you know? just tell her we're just going to stand her up. Okay, we're just going to carry her outside on this sheet. So we're going to lay her down. Yeah, tell her to keep her hands on her chest. Uh, just slowly. All right, a couple of steps in. That's 89 audio, it's not great, are they? As for me? Yep. My hands are pretty cool though. Hang on when you're ready. Our patient was suffering pulmonary edema, underwent a triple bypass and returned home to her family three weeks later. Often the role of the ambulance officer becomes a bit of an emotional support sometimes as well, doesn't it? Oh, you sort of sudden yeah. it's it's part of the picture, isn't it? You, you know, we'll go to a person who's just lost their husband or their wife and, and there's not much we can do for them, but we spend the next hour basically with the grieving widow or the mm. or the family and explaining to them what's going to happen and taking them step by step what they've got to do and, and trying to just comfort them mm. and try and get them through that uh, stressful time in their life. And, and, and so we end up job, doing yeah. a little bit of counselling, don't we? And, and if suppose. you can put the, yourself in their shoes, you know, sometimes these people have spent 60 years together and they're 
Mm. One of them dies and they're just just absolutely shattered and mm. they, don't, they literally don't know what to do next. They don't know. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And yet you get the other case. I had this one, one night where this guy had arrested old bloke, he was naked and we sort of thought, oh, this might be a bit strange. We got there, we did the full cardiac arrest sequence and did the transport, but it wasn't looking good. Mm. And all the way to hospital, these wives in the front seat telling me, oh, what a great way to go, because I think they were, uh, you know, the 70-year-old couple still still doing the tango and uh, he's, he's passed away while they're still doing that. And he's gone, what a great way to go. She's telling me all the way to hospital. She must have said it five or six times. That's happy as well. Yeah, and that's great, that's great. Mm. But, uh, I wouldn't mind going that way. Thank you, 563 NBA. Car into a pole. Middle aged male is unconscious and has been dragged from the car. Negative code 9. So what's happened, guys? We just seen the car here on the side of the road. We thought it was just the airbag. We just saw a reverse back in the city. And he's coming to a little bit and going in and out. He hasn't. I don't know if he speaks English or anything. He hasn't come through that he's much. He's going to roll back. Let's do it on the board. Can someone just get our bed and then put it half height close? Can't see anything. I'll probably pull the jacket. Off. Uh, whether Did you he's... see what happened? I don't know. Right, just take his head and his shoulders. Okay, on, that, on my call, on, on three. One, two, three. Looks like his teeth have broken there at the front. He's getting strapped to the board, and we'll get him up in the car. We'll do a full assessment in the car. Okay? There's an ID in the uh, brown jacket that I've cut off that's underneath him, oh, yeah? I think. Felt like it. Yep, okay. On three, everyone right? One, two, three. Thanks, mate. You just want to pull that bag out. Over to the car, it'd be good. Then if you drive for us, if you want to... I'll just get a line in and uh, you if you just want to do an assessment. I'll do the office on the top then for the airway if you want. Hello. Hello. Open your eyes. It's 96. Six. Okay, 130. 1.30 systolic. I'll just get a quick... Uh... You able to pass the code 3 for us, Ben? Alright, male, approximately 40 years of age. Driver into a telegraph pole. Ooh, mark him as being unconscious. See, because he can move his arms at times. Just, he tends to be able to localise. 6.3 yeah. BSL. BSL 6.3. Okay, just just pause for one moment there. Oh, you can't put it. Okay. Want me to pull over? Okay, cannula's in, you're right. No, Tend to be able to localise, although when we think. Yeah. Although. Um, I don't know whether it's with purpose or. I don't know, it might be his teeth though, you know. Yeah, see. Keep your eyes open. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sit still. In the ambulance. Okay. Nice and still. In the ambulance. Okay? Come in. Ambulance. Come in. Stay still. You've had a car accident. What's your name? David. David. Yeah. David. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You're the telegraph pole, David. You're yeah. knocked out. Okay. Stay still. Have you got any pain anywhere? No. No. Do you remember what happened? No. Hey? No. Okay. Stop. Have you had any alcohol tonight? No. No alcohol? No. Did you fall asleep? No. Hey? No. No. You have fits? Yes. Do you take medications for that? No. No. But you've had a fit before? Yes. Just gonna feel down your legs. You let me know if there's any pain. Okay? Any pain here? No. Here? How's it? How old are you? 45. 45. Push the accelerator. Push down. Do you know what day it is today? I'm not sure. You're not sure. Okay. 
Can you confirm for me again? Have you had fits before? Have you had a seizure before? No. 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 Do you take any medications at all? What do you take? I got a medication. What for? What tablets? No. Okay. It's pretty unclear about it all still, so. You have to lie very still. You're on a hard board at the moment. We're going to take you into the hospital to be assessed by the doctors, okay? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You had a car accident, all right? We need to car just... Car accident? Yes. A car accident? Car accident, yep. What's wrong with it? Sorry. You hit a telegraph pole. You got it? Okay. You just had a car accident. Car accident? Car accident, yeah. I've got a driver. Pardon? You didn't drive? David fell asleep at the wheel and had no knowledge of the accident. He was discharged from hospital the next day. Thank you, 963. 963, Sydney. Thank you, 963. You have a young male with lacerations and bleeding. 963, copy that. Yeah, Horsley Drive. Yeah, turn right and left, that's Victoria Road. It's right at the beginning there, so in a bit, I think Hart's been given the cross and that's not far. 46, that's your side. 78. And close. And you got a wave on your right. What's happened? Um, this evening about 6 o'clock, I'm getting cut through from my cat like feeding him as usual. Yeah. And I've slept, being a stupid idiot. Yeah. And I've got this small cut. And that's only just stopped bleeding about five minutes ago. That's been bleeding most of the night. So you just yes. opened a tin of cat food? Yeah. And you just cut it. And how long ago was this? About six o'clock. Six o'clock? Yeah. You're not cut anywhere else? No, that's it. Have you had a tetanus shot recently? No. No, it doesn't really require stitches. Yeah, you one's clean it up and all that and go see your GP and get a tetanus shot when you get a chance? Yeah, I'm probably good to do that. Hey? Yeah. How many cats do you have? Oh, just the one. What's your cat's name? Blaze. Just stinning. Yeah. I had to change the tyre about half an hour ago before I called you guys. You changed the tyre? Yeah. So I kept that covered. Having a bad night, eh? Yeah. Cut your finger and having a flat tyre. Yeah. Band-aid. So you just got to keep it clean, mate, all right? Yeah. You got to keep it clean, mate. And bend your finger. All right. Yeah, that's, that's virtue all, mate. you just got to keep it clean. Yeah. All right, and uh, probably see your doctor in a couple of hours, actually, and uh, get a tetanus shot. Yeah. All right, or if you want, you can get your parents to run you up to hospital or... Yeah, I'd probably go to the doctor myself. Yeah, it might be better. It might probably be quicker. Yeah. All right. I'm old enough now, so I'll just do it myself. Yeah, all right. All right, thanks for that. All right, mate, all the best. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. All right, mate. you got to cater for all kinds yeah. of people. Yeah. and it's just. Mind you, I had trouble putting the band-aid on. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, another night in the life of a paramedic providing help. <laughs>